Andrea Bowman, NDSU Extension Leadership and Civic Engagement Program Coordinator. Micro lesson, meaningful meetings. Today's micro lesson will cover tips on how to make meetings more meaningful to everyone. Time is a valuable resource, one we can't replace. Today, we're gonna to learn to focus your time together as an organization for the best conservation in impact, both for your board and for your constituents. Today's objectives are to learn how to plan effective and efficient meetings, discuss expectations for supervisors and staff for meeting preparation and participation, set ground rules and a clear timeline, incorporate the district's strategic plan into meetings, and to start the discussion on board succession. Communication is a key element in meaningful meetings and determining how your board and staff communicate will be the foundation for success in meeting these objectives. So what makes a meeting effective? This is what's being done. The days of meeting to meet, just to meet, are over. Supervisors want to make a difference. The meeting is for business and to get things done. So what's your reason for being there? What's the business that needs to be conducted? What's your focus? What strategic goal are you working towards in that agenda? Is everyone engaged? Are all board members participating? And what action steps will move you forward and are they clearly defined as to who and when they will be done? Now, if there's an item of business the board really isn't ready to make a decision on, take steps to get closer to making a decision. This might be simply tabling it to the next meeting, assigning it to a committee, or thinking about what information you need and who can gather that before the next meeting so a decision can be made. So what makes a meeting efficient? This is how it's being done. Did the meeting start and end on time? Do you have an end time for your meeting? Do you have the proper length of a meeting in mind? Have you agreed on that as a board in that all meetings will be done in this X amount of time? Was the agenda followed? This is your roadmap for what needs to happen. Um, make sure that there was no side conversations or out of control discussion. Focus is very important to use your time efficiently in a meeting. And was all necessary business discussed and acted upon? It's not a race to see how fast you can get your meeting done, but it still needs to happen to make sure that the time is used efficiently and stay on track. Sharing information in advance can be one easy way to help make meetings both effective and efficient. The foundation to an efficient meeting, an effective meeting, is really in the pre-work and the follow-up before the next meeting. So media agenda should be distributed to the board before the meeting. Be consistent with the platform and timeline that that information is being shared and communicate that with the board. And have your mission and vision statement on each agenda to help you stay focused and remember why you are there. These are just a few simple steps that you can take to help you meet some of those goals of making your meetings more meaningful. Keep the meeting organized. I know I've said this a lot in this training, set an effective agenda and follow it. And I can't stress this, is, this enough. Have a protocol in place for how agendas are set this is often the chair and perhaps a staff member, but have it steps in place if someone else wants to get something put on the agenda of how to make that happen. Um, if you're consistently adding items to your agenda at each meeting, maybe you need to reflect on how your agendas are set. Um, keeping a yearly timeline and calendar for important deadlines can be really helpful in helping you set those agendas. It can be also a great tool when you're bringing in new supervisors and staff for them to see 
what a year in the life of your soil conservation district look like. Again, you're gonna wanna share um, information in advance. Meeting minutes can be shared in advance, any reports and financials, all of that can be shared in advance so supervisors have the proper time to review that and you're not sitting down at the board meeting and seeing all this information for the first time. You also wanna set that expectation that board members come prepared and set ground rules so everybody is on the same page as far as what those expectations are. Again, communication is a key component to success. So ground rules. Oftentimes I ask organizations if they have ground rules and they'll say, no, we're just a little group. We don't really need written ground rules. And I'll reply that if you don't have written ground rules, you have unwritten ground rules. And those are the things that have become acceptable in your meetings over time. These can be as simple as um, people coming to meetings late, unprepared, maybe not coming at all and not letting anyone know, or taking phone calls and talking on the phone during the meeting. So setting ground rules and agreeing on them is a very important step um, to making sure everyone is on the same page and knows what the expectations are. Now, some common ground rules are certainly that everyone participates, that you use parliamentary procedure. If you're not comfortable with parliamentary procedure, don't be afraid to ask for help or for resources. Adhere to the open record and meeting laws. Uh, this one is actually a non-negotiable one because it is in the North Dakota Century Code, but it's just a good reminder to make sure everybody knows that. A stay focused, no cell phones in the room can be a ground rule. Now, I understand there might be times where you need to take an important call, but just communicate with that, that with your board. Say, I have an important call coming in. I'm going to have to excuse myself at some point during the meeting. Maintain that forward momentum, a reach closure on all topics, follow the agenda, that's your roadmap, speak for yourself, maintain confidentiality when necessary. Um, this is a case if you're using an executive session for anything, a start and stop on time, and allow everyone the chance to speak. Um, remember that these are open meetings. Um, you don't have to let the public comment but it can be good for relationship building and transparency to have a protocol in place as to how the public can comment on agenda items. Education is an important part, uh, should be an important part of your board agendas. Um, it's a good way to share resources with the group and help you to con continue to grow both as a board and individually. Um, it can be as simple as watching a short video, like a micro lesson. You could be learning about a new practice, inviting a guest presenter. Maybe it's an update from a partner. Um, if you do have a guest presenter, um, they're, they're probably on the agenda um, under new business, um, but move them up to the top of the agenda so that they can go first. Maybe you do some of your housekeeping things first, um, but then let them present so that they have an option to leave. Of course, you're gonna invite them to stay for the whole meeting, but then that gives them the flexibility to leave if they have to. Um, and then going on a tour of your district, just taking a drive or maybe um, a tour of a specific project within your district can be great educational opportunities, as well as a great time for you to invite new potential board members to come along and learn with you. So establishing that timeline with clear expectations and developing uh, how and when meeting information will be shared, what platform, will it be emailed? Is it in a Teams folder? Um, when before the meeting can I expect it? Uh, hopefully those board packets can be consistently provided in advance of the meeting, allowing for questions prior to the meeting. Um, this gives everyone an opportunity to do a little research and thoughtful thinking um, before they answer those questions. Uh, adopting an onboarding process for new members and staff. Uh, reserve time before or after the meeting for socializing. So you can get that. That part is an important part of the organization, but allow time for that before or after the business meeting. And then take some time 
to evaluate your board meetings and your participation in them. So before you adjourn the meeting, make sure it's clear of what will happen next. So what needs to be done before the next meeting? Know who will do it and when you're gonna meet again. Set that next, next meeting date before you leave the meeting. So some tips to stay on track. Establish a checklist in yearly calendar for meeting preparation. Conduct those board self-evaluations. They're not always the funnest thing to do, but they're important. Plan for board vacancies. Invite potential supervisors to meetings and events the SED hosts. Effective boards need good leaders and good followers. Make sure you know what role you're in and you're supporting um, the other. So let's review. Effective and efficient meetings don't just happen. They are thoughtfully planned. Supervisors and staff are expected to attend meetings, prepared, and questions asked in advance when possible. Ground rules and clear timelines should be met, set, and adhered to. The district strategic plan should be a part of every meeting. And efforts need to be made to involve potential board members in advance. In cooperation, a board and incorporate a board succession plan. This is our soil and water conservation team. Please feel free to reach out to one of us for more information or to review the micro lesson discussion meaningful meanings handout that was provided to you with this micro lesson. These are the discussion questions in that handout and they are designed for you to reflect as an board on how your meetings are and think about how you can make them more meaningful. Best of luck in your effective and efficient meaningful meetings.